Hey guys, welcome back to One Man Up Fishing on catch and release and why catch and release? How come uh, people went to it? What was the history of it? Now, I've been fishing since the early 70s. I was just a little kid when I got started. And back then, there was no catch and release. Uh, I never even heard it mentioned. Uh, we used to eat bass. And most of my childhood, up until probably my late teens, early 20s, when we'd go out fishing in the Everglades, we would keep all the fish, bring them home, clean them, cook them up. The BASS began pushing catch and release. Their tournaments went to catch and release. Um, and I think it's a very good thing. If you watch my videos, you know that I always catch and release the fish. Um, I have a hook remover. I try and get down into the, if the hook, if the bass is gut hooked, um, I will take great care in removing the hook. Um, that's one of the reasons why you want to be careful when you fish and set the hook as quickly as you can uh, when you're fishing the soft plastics. So you want to keep the fish alive and again, they're there for you to catch the next time you go out. They're personally, if a person wants to catch the fish and harvest the fish for the purpose of eating it, that's fine with me. Um, I just don't do it anymore and there are two main reasons why I no longer do it. Number one is as catch and release became more popular, I realized that I had no real desire to keep the fish anymore and eat them. Even my father, who had been eating, you know, been fishing his whole life and, and not just uh, bass, but would go out crabbing and all kinds of fishing, um, even he stopped eating them. So we just would go out, catch them, and, and release them. Let the next guy come along and catch them or come back and catch them another time. So that's one of the reasons. You know, it sustains the fisheries, certainly. The other reason, it's kind of a personal reason, as I've gotten older, and this is gonna sound a little, uh, a little out there, but you know, I just can't hurt the fish. You know, I don't even like the fact that I have to use a hook anymore. And I know it's just a fish, it's not a person. I don't try and impart uh, the emotions or, the, uh, or the, the pain that a person might feel if you jammed a hook in their mouth. Um, you know, the bat, bass's mouth is cartilage. Obviously, they have some kind of a sensation in there. But if I thought I was really injuring the fish in some way and causing great pain, I would stop fishing. That's just how I feel about it personally. I know I never felt that way as a younger man. I never really gave it a second thought. But as I've grown older, um, I don't know, maybe it's just something to do with aging. Uh, I just kind of have more respect for the fish now and I don't want to hurt them uh, if, I, if I can. Um, even if I, and also the other thing, the reason why people would harvest bass back in the day was because they want to have them mounted. Well, you don't have to worry about that now. Nobody uses the skin of the fish anymore. So even if I caught a 10 pound fish um, or a 15 pound fish, if I was out there fishing in the glades and I hooked into some whale, um, I would release it. I would take pictures, I would measure it, I would weigh it, I would document it. And you can take those photos to a taxidermist and they can create that exact fish and it'll look just as good with the techniques they have now as uh, if you caught and kept the fish. So those are the two main reasons I do catch and release. Um, that's not the same for evasive species. You know, we have a real problem uh, in this country, especially the South with snakehead, which are not a native fish. And of course they compete with the large mouth and, and there's a problem. They're very aggressive. And if you live in Florida, you know all about invasive species. We got every kind of damn lizard, iguanas that are all over the place. You've got the big uh, pythons out in the Everglades. That happened because of the of the pet trade, uh, and a research facility went down back in the uh, in the 90s with Hurricane Andrew. So I don't have a problem with harvesting the invasive species because you're protecting the environment. And again, as long as you're going to eat them, I would never catch a snakehead and just toss it on shore and let it die. I see no point in that. So I would either release it, um, as if you've watched the videos, you know that uh, I haven't caught any snakehead yet, but Joe from Parabellum Fishing, uh, he catches them all the time. Sometimes he eats them, sometimes he catches and releases them. Don't have a problem with that. If you're gonna keep the evasive species, that's okay. So I just wanted to cover that. Um, again, I have no problem with people who wanna catch the fish and consume them. I did that for a couple of decades. But uh, now I just don't have any interest in it. So if I want fish, I just go to my local store and buy some. Of course, you can't buy bass. Um, they're, they're a game fish, so you can't purchase them. So that's just a little bit about, um, you know, kind of my philosophy on it. 
I hope you found this video semi-interesting. <laughs> I almost screwed that up. Mike here with One Man Op Fishing, and I'll see you guys next time.